So a while ago on this channel, I started a series that was about NBA players you didn't know played for certain teams. Today we're looking at the Los Angeles Lakers. These are players that you may have forgotten play for the Lakers or you may have never known. And maybe you did know some of these players, but you just forgot. And also let me know down below in the comment section what team I should do next. I'm thinking about the Boston Celtics next, but let me know what team after that. With that said, if you enjoy these types of videos, be sure to hit that like button. Let's see if we can reach a thousand likes for the next video. And if you're new around here and you enjoy NBA content every single week, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And without further ado, let's get into the video. At number six, Horace Grant. Horace Grant is somebody that's remembered for being a part of the Chicago Bulls. He's a four-time NBA champion, he was even an all-star in the Chicago Bulls in the 1994 NBA season. But a four-time NBA champion is somebody that isn't forgotten. Obviously those four NBA championships came from playing alongside Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen and of course Phil Jackson as the head coach. But Horace Grant played his role and was always a very reliable and serviceable power forward for his team. He had stints in Orlando, Seattle, and of course the Los Angeles Lakers, but he had a very weird ending to his NBA career. Once he left the Chicago Bulls, where he spent majority of his career, he then went to the Orlando Magic, played with Shaquille O'Neal and Penny Hardaway. They weren't able to get an NBA championship, but they did knock off the Chicago Bulls during MJ's return season in the 1995 NBA season. Then he was traded to the Seattle Supersonics, and then after the one season with Seattle, he got traded to the Lakers. Then he went back to the Magic in the offseason, and then he went back to the Lakers. So he actually played on the Lakers twice. And Horace Grant was not only a player for the Los Angeles Lakers, he was an NBA champion for the Los Angeles Lakers. He helped them win another championship in the 2000-2001 season, and then when he returned to the Los Angeles Lakers for the second time after he considered retiring, that was actually during the 2003-04 season, which meant that he was a backup power forward to Carl Malone. And you'd assume if that team had stayed healthy, they also would have won an NBA championship, and he could have been a two-time NBA champion for the Los Angeles Lakers. But a lot of people don't know that Horace Grant played for the Lakers, let alone do they know that he played there twice. Number 5. Jerome Kersey Jerome Kersey is another NBA champion, somebody who's well known for the Portland Trailblazers, but Jerome Kersey was actually a very decent player. He was a guy in just his fourth season who averaged 19 points, 8 rebounds, shooting 50% from the field. And in the 1996-1997 NBA season, Jerome Kersey had signed with the Los Angeles Lakers as a free agent, and he actually had a pretty productive year considering that in the years prior, he wasn't playing too many minutes. Once he went to the Lakers, he became a serviceable player. He wasn't used as a scoring option, but he was a guy that would rebound at the small forward position and play some pretty solid defense. He averaged 25 minutes that season, which was the most that he had averaged in four seasons. And this season was actually a pretty big season for the Los Angeles Lakers. They were one of the better teams in the league, and that's because they had Shaquille O'Neal, the most dominant player in the league, alongside a rookie Kobe Bryant. But they had guys like Eddie Jones, Robert Ory, and they looked like a pretty good team throughout the season. Nick Van Exel was there. And of course, Jerome Kersey helped this team become one of the better teams in the league, as the Lakers finished with 56 wins. But unfortunately, they would lose in the Western Conference semi-final. Number four, Mitch Richmond. Mitch Richmond is obviously known for his time with the Golden State Warriors with the Run TMC trio and of course the Sacramento Kings, where he did play most of his career. And throughout Mitch Richmond's NBA career, he was an amazing player. He was a six-time NBA All-Star, an All-Star MVP in 1995. He also was a Rookie of the Year and he was a guy that many players feared since he was one of the better scorers in the league. He averaged almost 23 points for an entire decade, not to mention in his rookie season he averaged 22 points, 6 rebounds and 4 assists. The one thing that Mitch Richmond was missing though was an NBA championship, and in his last year, at the age of 36 years old, he went to the Los Angeles Lakers, a team with Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, and Mitch Richmond after that season was an NBA champion. He would actually only play 11 minutes per game off the bench and only average 4 points a game, which obviously wasn't the Mitch Richmond that people had seen throughout his NBA career. But he still got what he wanted, an NBA championship. He won a ring with the Los Angeles Lakers in the 2002 NBA Finals, but Richmond only played 4 minutes overall. In Game 4 of the NBA Finals, just seconds after making the last basket of his career, Mitch Richmond dribbled out the clock to win the title with the Los Angeles Lakers, and after an illustrious career, Mitch Richmond was an NBA champion, and with the Los Angeles Lakers, which many people didn't know that Mitch Richmond was once a Los Angeles Laker. Number 3, Spencer Haywood. A lot of people don't know the name Spencer Haywood, but let me put this in perspective. Spencer Haywood's rookie year, he averaged 30 points and 19 and a half rebounds. 
And his rookie season is one of the most ridiculous rookie seasons of all time. But that was actually in the ABA and not the NBA. But either way, at that time, they were both very good leagues. But he was still a very talented player in the NBA as well. He averaged 29 and 13 in just his third season in the league. But even with all the accomplishments that Spencer Haywood had through his entire career, he was not an NBA champion until he went to the Los Angeles Lakers. In the 1979-1980 NBA season, he actually played for the Los Angeles Lakers. He played 20 minutes per game and he only averaged 9.7 points and 4.6 rebounds, which is vastly different from how he played when he was a part of the Seattle Supersonics but after that season, he would become an NBA champion. He would go on to be a part of the Los Angeles Lakers NBA Finals team that matched up against the Philadelphia 76ers, and this was Magic Johnson's rookie year, when he was actually able to play at the center position in the NBA Finals when Kareem Abdul-Jabbar went down. And this year was the official birth of the modern game, with Larry Bird and Magic Johnson entering and taking over the league. Whilst for Spencer Haywood, this was basically the end of his career. During the late 1970s, Haywood became addicted to cocaine and he was dismissed from the Los Angeles Lakers by then coach Paul Westhead during the 1980 NBA Finals for falling asleep during practice due to his addiction. And that was actually a big issue at the time during the 1970s and 1980s in the entire league until Magic Johnson and Larry Bird really showcased what the NBA was about and transformed the league. Number 2, Isaiah Ryder. Ryder is such an interesting player because in his second NBA season he averaged 20 points per game, a guy that you'd expect to have an illustrious NBA career, but really he only ever spent 8 seasons in the league from age 22 up until age 30. He was a high flyer who won the NBA Slam Dunk competition in the 1994 NBA season and he was a guy that was drafted number 5 overall with a lot of potential entering the league. He was able to be a dynamic duo with Kevin Garnett and they had some pretty good chemistry together. But unfortunately for him he had a lot of off the court issues. For example there was a time where he was involved in an incident in which he kicked a female manager of a sports bar and then he was convicted of 5th degree assault. So obviously that wasn't the only thing that he was involved in, but by 1996 the Minnesota Timberwolves had lost patience in him and actually traded him away. They traded him to Portland. But then not too long after that he was arrested for marijuana possession, and then he was arrested for gambling. Later on he went to the Atlanta Hawks, but once again he continued to have issues in Atlanta, and by the 2000-2001 season, Isaiah Ryder was actually a part of the Los Angeles Lakers, which a lot of people don't know, considering that he came off the bench and only averaged 7.6 points and only played 18 minutes, which was far less than what he had played the previous season at 34 minutes per game. But during that season, Isaiah Ryder got what he wanted, an NBA championship. But he actually never made it to the finals. He missed a team flight to New York and was late to several practices. Then he was left off the team's playoff roster. But because he had played throughout the entire season, he was still awarded an NBA championship. At number one, Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman was obviously one of the most tenacious, most insane and ridiculous players of all time. The man could rebound the ball like crazy. Obviously one of the better defenders in NBA history and he did not care about scoring whatsoever. In fact, with the Los Angeles Lakers, he played 28 minutes per game and averaged two points. That's it. He also only had two field goal attempts per game and still averaged 11 rebounds. But he would only play 23 games for the Los Angeles Lakers as he would really struggle to fit in with that team and what the culture was about in LA, which is definitely not unlike Dennis Rodman towards the end of his career. He couldn't fit in Dallas, Los Angeles or the San Antonio Spurs. Obviously with the Detroit Pistons and before he really turned into the worm and the bad boy Dennis Rodman, he was able to play his role for that team as he felt that he had a family in Detroit. Then he went to Chicago and he played alongside MJ, Scotty and Phil Jackson and he had a role, he knew what he was about. But in Los Angeles, in Dallas and in San Antonio, he couldn't fit in. He clashed with David Robinson in San Antonio and he clashed with the Los Angeles Lakers management and with Dallas's management as well. And that's why many people don't remember Dennis Rodman actually playing for the Los Angeles Lakers. Either you were too young to watch, or you just don't know. Or you do know and you're just needing a reminder. But yeah, Dennis Rodman played 23 games for the Los Angeles Lakers. Dennis Rodman said, and I quote, His time with the Los Angeles Lakers was a bunch of young guys on that team who were sitting there bitching and complaining all the damn time. And I'm pretty sure we know who he would have been talking about. Kobe. Kobe is that young guy on that Los Angeles Lakers team who demanded that everybody put in the work and the drive to compete at the highest level. Dennis Rodman, although he was a great player, wasn't willing to do that. He would rock up to the game, do what he had to do, leave and party, and do it all over again each and every night. 
Kobe Bryant and Dennis Rodman, you could have seen, they would clash. Kobe was always in the gym working and Dennis was always out partying. So it wasn't really a surprise that Dennis Rodman was released by the Los Angeles Lakers after only 23 games. But had Dennis Rodman been that player that would actually put in the work, even just a little bit, they would have had Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, and Dennis Rodman, and that would have been scary. Even scarier than what they had, which was already scary enough with Kobe and Shaq together. With that said, let me know what you think about this video. Let me know if you have any other players that you believe people have forgotten or just didn't know about playing for the Los Angeles Lakers. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like to show your support. Let's aim for a thousand likes. Subscribe if you're new. It's been your Warning Smith. I am out. Peace.